ask the Holy Spirit and Jesus for a map of the mind. Because I, I like graphics. Even when I was in school, I always had crayons and was like drawing things. I said, give me a picture. Can you, can you give me a picture? This is getting to be a little ethereal here. Uh, can you give me a picture? And so, definitely, we have a picture. This is our desire, our power of prayer in the middle. Here's our beliefs. People always say, where are my beliefs? Here's our thoughts. Here's our emotions. Here's our perceptions. You've got to get inside here. It's like anybody who watched Star Trek, the first edition of Star Trek had, who was in charge of the engine room? Um, Scotty. Scotty. Yeah. Captain! He was Scottish. <laughs> Captain, we've got a breach at the core. That never sounded good, did it? <laughs> whenever, whenever Scotty said that to Captain James Kirk, <laughs> Captain, we've got a breach at the core. It's like, uh-oh, the ship could explode, and I, I like Star Trek. No, it can't happen. I don't want, to, don't want the ship to blow up. Uh, this is desire, and you know what Jesus has to say about desire? He says, truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. You think if desire is important? Truth! He's talking truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire. Not by your belief. He doesn't say belief. He doesn't say your thoughts. He doesn't say anything about your emotions. Definitely nothing about your perceptions. Like climbing, climbing up a big mountain here. Nope, nothing about that. Swimming through the ocean to get salvation. Nope, nothing about that. Truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. Right outside, what is this desire? Well, in heaven, desire is completely unified, so there's no such thing as desire. You might say heaven is desirelessness. Doesn't that make sense? Heaven is everything, so you don't have any desires in heaven. You, have, you know that you're one with God. What would you possibly desire if you know that you're everything? You couldn't possibly desire anything. There's no such thing as desire in heaven. But in terms of the sleeping mind, this is the point of prayer. This is your prayer point down here. This is desire. And belief, the first belief that ever seemed to arise, not in reality, but in psychosis and schizophrenia, is the ego. And this ego belief generated lots of thoughts, a whole thought system, based on the belief in separation. And then these thoughts generated a lot of emotions. Fear, guilt, shame, pain, uh, anything you can imagine, what we call the negative emotions, are all generated from this belief in separation. Everything that is a negative emotion is generated. And then an entire world, the mountains, the oceans, the stars, the stars, the planets, <laughs> it looks like an A. an A. But we have planets in this, okay, so put Saturn up there. <laughs> You got all kinds of planets and everything. The whole cosmos. It looks like a confist. This, over here, this is a black hole. Even the black hole is a projection. It's all out here is all the projection. And so, the best thing I can say about the map of the mind is the arrow goes this way. 
The perceptions are brought about by the emotions. There's a ring of fear under this world. Love doesn't make this world go round, like the romantic songs say. There's a ring of fear underneath this world. That's what's making this world. It shouldn't be too surprising with all the wars and plagues and pestilence and everything that's going on, you know, in, in, throughout human history. So the emotions are producing the perceptions. The emotions are being determined by the thoughts. You ever meet those people along the way that go, feel your way to God. Just feel it. <laughs> you, you go along and you start to have a conversation and they go, David, feel the feelings. Feel your way to God. Well, like sometimes they call them the touchy-feely people. But the emotions are part of the equation, no doubt. The feelings and the emotions are part of it. But you see where they are in the equation. They come on an outer ring outside of cognition. Outside of thoughts. You know, sometimes you hear people say, get out of your head and get into your heart. Has anybody ever heard that, a spiritual journey? The longest journey you'll ever take was is the 15 inches from your head to your heart. You're not finished. It goes the other way around. You've got to get out of your fearful emotions and get back into your what? Your thoughts. You've got to get inside there to the cognition because the thoughts are producing the emotions. Now, is it important to feel the feelings? Of course. If you're up here and you think you're a human being and you've got, you've forgotten all about all this stuff and you're just kind of distracted, you know, wandering through the world. I'm working my job. Collect my pay. <laughs> Believe I'm gliding down the highway. Let's give him a car. But in fact, slip sliding away, slip sliding away. If you think you're out here, and you just think that this is all that there is, in this world up here, then basically you've got to start to, to come underneath and go into your mind. And that's where getting in touch with the emotions help bring you, it's like an inroad. The Holy Spirit's going to say, let's go like this. We've got to go back inside. Got to go inside your mind, inside your consciousness, and back towards this core desire power. This is the only place you're going to be still and know God is down here at the core. But everything out here is produced by what's underneath it. And even when you get in touch with your thoughts, you can believe things about your thoughts that aren't true. You can actually believe that your thoughts are ineffectual. Isn't that a pretty common belief? How many people do you know that, that when you talk about wars in the Middle East or in Iraq and Iran, they go, oh yeah, those are my attack thoughts. I'm doing it. I'm completely behind the, the Middle East conflict and the, the Iraq conflict. How many people are admitting, have you met any, that say, oh it's my attack thoughts. It's not Osama bin Laden. It's my attack thoughts. Well, what about Mussolini? Well, yeah, that was my attack thoughts too. I, I'm responsible for all the ones in history. Well, what about Hitler? Oh, yep. They, they admit it. They say, yeah, that was my attack thoughts. The Third Reich? It was, yeah, that was my attack thoughts. You see, this is buried down there. The, the attack thoughts are making up this whole world. In fact, Jesus says history wouldn't even exist if you didn't keep making the same mistake in the present. It's like on a loop of, of making a wrong-minded choice, and that's what linear time is. It's just this wrong-minded decision playing out over and over and over. One instant repeated over and over. The unholy instant of time and space of the ego just getting played over and over and over. And meanwhile, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are calling us back into the core, so we can come back to heaven. So you can believe things about your thoughts. For most people we could say they do not believe that their thoughts are powerful enough to change the world. 
or to mess the world up, or to help the world, or to improve. Anything that they believe about their thoughts is usually it's like there's just these little things whirling around in the mind, which they associate with the brain. And, and most people feel it's good things that people don't know what's going on in there. Because if people knew what was going on, they'd know how crazy I was. That's usually the extent of, of that with thoughts. So, there we go, down, down, down. So, in the end, when we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness is, is a belief here. We could say that if we took a cross-section cut across here, we'll say, that when all of these rings are completely lined up through desire, this is where the willingness comes from, the little willingness, but we would say that, that forgiveness is the belief and your real thoughts, we'll call them real thoughts here, the emotion is love and the perception is, we'll just call it healed perception. Um, the, this is a miracle when all of these are lined up with the Holy Spirit. And that just shows that all of these have to come from a willingness to be healed in here and then everything else lines up. So, to me that was really helpful. When I, when I got in touch with this, it was like, I'm kind of, I always consider myself very graphic and that was like, wow, I, I would have loved that map early in my life because that could have helped clear it up a lot of confusion when I was out there on the surface trying to fix things, change things, make the world a better place. I got involved in, I was an activist, you know, stop nuclear proliferation, end world hunger, you know, all getting involved in ecology and on and on and on. There's a lot of effort that I put into trying to make the world a better place and, and I really have to say honestly I didn't have a clue of what was going on under the surface, underneath in my consciousness. But once I got a hold of the Course it's like it made it a real straight shot to God because it's so, you can just feel it in your core of your being like, whoa, there's actually someone who, who really knows the way out. And, and the gratitude for that way shower, you know, is just, for me it was enormous, you know, to actually have someone who knew, who's been through it all and knows the way out. Of course that presence could say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because it was, it is the way, the truth, and the life. And it, it's beautiful to have such a clear expression.